Hello everyone, welcome to SIUK India webinar. Thank you for joining us today. We are now live with the Brunel University. Today we have Steve with us who will let us know more about this special webinar session. Please feel free to post all the questions in the chat box on the right. We will answer all the questions after the presentation during the Q&A session. So let's start. Over to you, uh, Steve. Okay, thank you, Topeka. So welcome, welcome everyone. Um, uh, thanks for joining. I'm um, Steve Council. I'm a member of academic staff in the computer science department at Brunel, and I'm also director of undergraduate admissions, which means I look at applications from students and make decisions on whether we can accept or otherwise um, based on your application. I want to spend about maybe 25 minutes, 30 minutes with some slides. And obviously, if you want to ask questions, post them in the chat and um, I can answer questions afterwards as well. So um, I want to talk about the, the department, um, the courses, and included in that, um, the placement opportunities, which we which we offer. Sorry, we offer a one year placement um, for students on their, in their third year, but I'll explain, hopefully all that will become, become clear. So, okay. So why would we, why would we want to sort of study computing? Well, there's four reasons there on that slide. So big data, data mining, AI, um, the cloud, driverless cars, um, and social media, all are reasons why it's a great time to be studying computing. And there are many, many jobs, and there's probably more jobs than, well, certainly at, at Brunel, we, we've probably got more jobs um, in the UK for people with IT skills than, than people with the IT skills. So there's loads and loads of reasons why you'd want to study computing, computer science at this particular point. Um, in terms of what we do, obviously we cover those topics I've just described in our courses, but we also try to make our teaching distinctive and that's a drone you might see. So we have 16 drones in our department with lots of hardware. Um, and if you're a student at Brunel, you can, you can borrow a drone and you can um, code it to, to do specific things. So we have plenty of equipment and, but we like to think our teaching is applied in the sense that we use software of course, but also allied to that, the hardware and the, the applied technology that, that, makes, that, that, that makes the software make sense in some sense. In that sort of theme, we also use robots um, in our teaching. So every single first year student will be get given a robot and you will use Java to code the robot. And that's just, that's not the robot you get given. <laughs> that's just an example robot. But um, we think, we feel that by giving you piece of hardware which you can you can actually use to code um, you can see the product of your coding straight away and that makes it more real it makes it more applied so we use robots and we teach java in the first year and um and you you're given a robot to, to borrow i'm afraid they cost quite a bit so we can't give you it but we, we loan it out to you in your first year our department building okay so we moved into a new new building about Three or four years ago and that is an image of the new building um, uh, on the left hand side at, in the evening obviously and all the staff are there and you also will also have seminars and small group meetings and tutor meetings in that in that in that building the official impression of the building is on the right hand side so that's what it looks like inside um, the lectures normally are held in a what we call a lecture center which is different to the apartment building um, that's a bigger building it can hold um, larger, larger, larger numbers of students. So you will you will see the department and you will be visiting the department quite a lot for your for your meetings with tutors and um, and fellow group students. In numbers, the department so we have fifty six academic staff of, of, of which I am one of one member. Of course, we have thirty five research staff and support staff. We have a technical team who can help you if you've got a problem with your laptop or you need some specific software. In terms of students, we have about just there are 1,000, 1,100 students across the four years that we operate. That's first year, second year, people out on placement, which I'll talk about later, and final year as well. Um, we have 150 master students, so students studying for an MSc, and we have about 100 PhD students, so students studying for a, a doctorate, if you like. So just to give you a feel of the, the numbers for it, that we have in our department. Computer science is actually becoming, as you can appreciate, hugely popular, uh, more and more so, and we're seeing increasing numbers of students applying to our, our courses, and probably, probably the same for, for most universities um, uh, across, across the world. Um, computing is the, the you know, the, there's so many applications in computing now, it's, it's become, it, it, there's so many jobs in data mining and, 
and cybersecurity as well. That sort of area that's becoming all encompassing. So um, a little bit about that's a bit about our department, a little bit about computer science more generally. Let's look at the pathway. So we offer two degrees in our, in our department at Brunel. One is the business computing degree, and the other is the uh, computer science degree. And if you're doing a computer science degree, you can enroll on any of those boxes or uh, degrees on the left hand side. The top one is straight computer science, and that's without a specialism. Okay, so the top one is no specialism. And the four underneath are all with specialism. So the first is, is you would graduate from Brunel with a computer science degree with an AI specialism, and then the next one down, computer science degree with a digital media and game specialism, et cetera, and so on for the other two. I'll explain what you have to do in order to qualify for that um, a little later, but just bear in mind that you can come out with a straight computer science degree or a straight a computer science degree with, with a specialism, and those are the four specialisms you can um, come out of Brunel with. Equally for business computing, you can come out with a straight business computing degree or one with a business e-business specialism, an HCI specialism, or a social media um, um, specialism. So that's essentially the, the, the courses we run, and those are the specialisms within each of those two, two main degrees that we offer. <coughs> so um, what's the degree structure? So this is without placement. Okay, I haven't included placement because the placement, year placement in industry um, happens between the second year and your final year. So this is just a straight first year, second year, final year degree. And in the first year, there's a common core of topics. So whether you are a business computing or a computer science student, you'll do the same topics, the same modules. There's no difference. In the second year, it starts to look a bit different because if you're doing a computer science degree, you have different modules, compare modules, subjects, I should say, compared with the business computing um, degree. And in the final year, as I've alluded to already, slightly, um, you can come out with a computer science straight degree, a business computing straight degree, or one of these specialisms we call. And I'll explain what you have to do to in order to qualify for that um, in a short while. Um, so that's the structure, common first year, um, second year, different modules. And final year is when you really start to specialise. And hopefully in the next few slides, we'll, we'll make that clear. So a common core first year, and then second year, specialism, so second year, different modules, I should say. And in the final year, you might opt for a specialism. Okay. So some of the modules in the first year or level one, as we call them, means the same thing. Um, and they're common to, to both degrees. And you'll do introductory programming, Java. You'll learn about the logic of computers. So um, Boolean predicate um, logic, um, information systems and organizations. So how computers inf influence its organizations. And there's some stats there with the data and information. It's, and in year one, you will do a group project where you are put together with some fellow students and you will work on a specific um, set of tasks as, as a group. And the reason we do that is because it tries to reflect what you'll do in industry where you're working with a team and you're working on specific tasks together. So those are, I won't dwell too much on these topics, um, um, but broadly speaking, they give you a, a, a range of skills um, in programming, understanding the background and the underlying theory behind computer science. This is why I said in, in, the, in the structure where it differs depending on whether you're doing computer science um, or business computing. So if you were doing business computing in your second year, you will do business analysis and process modeling and ICTs in society, and you will do the three modules underneath. So, so starting with software development and management. So five modules, your business computing student. And equally, um, if you're a computer science student, you'll do algorithms and applications and networks and operating systems in your second year and the same three as the business computing people are doing. So starting with software development and management, usability engineering and year two group project. So five modules in year two, uh, but they differ depending on what degree you're actually on. I think it's important to mention um, the year two group project because as I mentioned in year one, you do a group project where you are put together with some fellow students. The same is in year two, uh, you do a group project with some fellow students, normally six or seven, and you will work on some Android applications, some maybe some game stuff, um, developing an app for, for mobile computing. So that's year two group project. Okay, this is where, it, it, as I mentioned in the structure chart, uh, level three or year three becomes even more specialized because in year three, you will choose specific options that you are interested in. So for example, on the business computing on the left-hand side there, there are five 
modules there, five topics, five projects. You will choose three of those, any three you want, okay? And in addition to that, you will do the two modules at the bottom, which is an advanced topics in business computing module and the final year project. So you can choose any three. So you might choose e-business, social media, cybersecurity, if you're a business computing student. If you are a computer science student, you again choose three modules from those listed on underneath. Um, so you might choose AI, you might choose software engineering, you might choose software project management. You'll notice that cybersecurity and software project management are common to both degrees. That's because we feel they're they're quite important um, or sufficiently important that we offer it to both degrees. The final year project is quite important because that's a weighted double. In other words, it's worth twice as many as other any other module. And that's where you will do a 10,000 word dissertation with a supervisor and you'll work to this, towards this long um, deliverable at the end, which is, as I said, a, a thesis. It's important to point out that in year one, year two, year three, you will always be given a tutor, a supervisor, who will help you guide you through the courseworks and make sure you stick to schedule. Now, I mentioned the specialisms early on, and you might have noticed there was a specialism in, in for example, um, business computing with e-business. So what that, what that implies is if you want to come out of Brunel with a straight business computing degree uh, with no specialism, you'll choose any three of those five. But if you want to come out of Brunel with business computing with an e-business specialism, you have to choose that module, the e-business module, as a requirement. And another requirement, you have to do a final year project at the bottom there, which involves an e-business component. So what I said earlier about the specialisms, there are things you need to um, satisfy in order to come out with a specialism. Let me give you another example from computer science. You will choose three modules from those five. Um, if any for any three from the of any three of those modules if you're a straight computer science degree student. But if, for example, you want to come out of Brunel with a computer science with an AI specialism, you have to choose or you have to do that AI module. And in addition, you have to do a final year project which involves an AI component. So you can do a specialism, you can come out of Brunel with a degree in, a, in computer science with AI, for example, but you'd have to have qualified with those two requirements. You've done the AI module and pass it, obviously, and do a final year project um, in that area as well. If you want to come out with a straight business computing or computer science degree, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can choose any of those, any three modules. It doesn't, there's no requirement. And you can do your final year project on anything you like. So that's the difference between specialisms and straight degrees. Now, that's the degree with three-year structure. I wanted to talk about industrial placement because we offer placement opportunities, a one-year time spent in industry coding or doing something you, you particularly enjoy. And that comes after the second year and you go out after your second year and you come back for your final year. So it's sandwiched in between, we call it a thick sandwich, because it's sandwiched between your second year and your final year. Now, I could talk at length about placements and what it involves. There are some interesting facts about placements which for example, show that if you do a placement, you'll get a best, better class of degree, you'll get a, a higher starting salary. So we try and encourage students to do a placement um, if we possibly can. So do a, do a placement in industry because it gives you experience, it gives you a step up on the, on the, on the employment ladder, and we think it help, will help you in your final year as well. It's not for everyone. Some people don't particularly want to do a placement, but that's, 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 that's your choice entirely. I did a placement when I was a student. I went to work for a construction company and I loved it. So anyway, that's, um, that, that's just personal to me. So some type, types of companies we place with, we place with 1,500 different companies. And we're one of the first universities to, in, to use the placement system, this placement scheme. Some examples of um, um, companies are there on the screen. Just two highlighted, IBM. Um, that's based down in the southwest of the country, um, IBM, and it's a lovely, it's like an old airfield, and it's, it's like an old mansion. So it's not just offices you get placed in, you can get placed in old mansions and all sorts of strange places in, in the UK. Um, Volkswagen is another one, um, <coughs> big one. Volkswagen, the, 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 the car company, and we know a student who was placed with Volkswagen. They're based in the Midlands, the mid part of, of England, UK, and they were given a car to use 
while they were on placement. So they got the use of a car. It wasn't to keep, obviously, but um, they got the use of a car because Volkswagen have thousands and thousands of cars. What was interesting, they had a little bit of an accident while they were there. No one got hurt, okay? It was just a little bump. And they were frightened they'd have to pay for the damages. Um, so they went to their line manager. This is one of our students. Said, um, I'm afraid I've had a little bump in your car. What are your cars? What do I do? And the manager said, okay, so look outside that window. And you can see all those thousands of cars lined up in the car park, the new cars. Go and pick yourself another one. So it's basically a perk of a job. You get given a car to use. Um, lots of other um, uh, perks. Formula One management. So if you're into Formula One, I don't know if anyone is into Formula One is listening. Um, sometimes you get given the choice to go to some of the Formula the F1 Grand Prix um, if you're working for Formula One. So, yet yeah, we've had students who've gone to different Grand Prix, all free of charge, of course. You flight free and you get to see what's going on in the Formula One um, scene. Some of these um, places may not be. Hillingdon Council is a London-based council and the Met, Met Police is Metropolitan Police in London-based um, police force. But some of the others might seem uh, might probably seem quite obvious to you. So Microsoft, Vodafone, um, Samsung, the, the phone companies, all we've had lots of people placed in different phone companies. Um, and it's normally around London and the Southeast, but we do have more, more and more people working in China. Um, and Japan and um, and the Middle East as well. So it's not just the UK that our students are placed. It's it's in it's around London and 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 Europe and the rest of the world. Here's two students of ours who work for Formula One, and they they were at their, they are sitting by the Formula One. So they they probably didn't get to drive that, but they certainly got to sit by it and um, I think they enjoyed that Renesh and you two to to have a look and see what, what what's going on inside the car. Um, three of our students there um, in past, um, so um, Chelsea, Zephan, and Noor, all who did placements, okay, and all, all who went on to get jobs. For example, Chelsea worked in placement for IBM and then went to work for Mercedes F1 after, after placement. You do get paid while you're on placement. You do get paid as a salary and you do get a tutor who will visit you while you're on placement. So you're not left to your own devices. Another important fact about placement sides, you produce a report at the end and it's worth 11% of your degree. So if you do a good placement and you do a good report, that can bump your final year grade or class degree up significantly. Um, so yeah, that's worth mentioning. Sometimes a, a company will ask you to go back to work for them if they like you. So there's always possibilities that you'll get employed by the company you did placement on. They may, may offer you a, um, um, a job when you, when you come back. So that's a little bit about placements um uh, let me uh, yeah this is the last slide and it's basically a, um, how you can contact us um if you, if you feel the inclination um so that gives you an idea of departments what, what we do the courses what that we run um the structure of the courses and how placement fits into into all of that so um on that on that note i will i will stop talking um i hope i haven't haven't gone over too by too much and i will uh, leave questions if anyone's got any questions i'll um yeah thank you for listening and hope you found that interesting and learned a little bit about what brunel does and and what we're all about so thank you very much i, I will stop stop sharing for so i can see what i'm doing, but uh, happy to answer any questions thank you so much for such a knowledgeable presentation, we are now moving towards the Q&A session. So the first question the student is asking, uh, I have completed my graduation in 2018 and have three years of experience in IT background. Can I apply for CS Masters? Okay, so thanks to Big, I, I, I'll take over on the chat. Thank you. Yes, I, um, um, I, I got it on, on my screen now. So um, I'm afraid I don't know. I'm only undergraduate admissions tutor. Um, so I don't know what the qualifications required for masters, I'm afraid. So you'd have to contact the masters team. Um, I do believe you need a degree at least uh, uh, if you've got experience. Um, oh, you've got graduated. Yeah. Um, please apply. But I don't. I don't. I'm afraid I don't run the masters applications process. I'm undergraduate admissions, so I don't know anything about the qualifications. But please contact them. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Question two, please tell me about the admissions process for computer science. What is the average age of students 
uh, attending the course. What about post-study work visa? Okay, so the average age of students would be 18 because they do their A-levels or equivalent at 18, and then they apply for, um, for, 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 for to come on our courses. Of course, there are, we do have mature students as well, so, but average age is 18 because they just finished their A-levels. In terms about post-study work visas, um, I think that's that's outside my um, knowledge, I'm afraid. I don't tend to get involved in the visa situation because that's something that um, would have to work with the, the university. But there are people in the university who, who would help that. Um, um, the, um, so, but I don't know of, 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 of how it works exactly. I, but I knew those students who've got visas who graduated, of course, and um, that, that, that that's, that's goes without saying. So, But I don't know about visas, I'm afraid, specifically. Um, what are the common partner companies? So question three, common partner companies for careers that university part university partners with. Um, so for careers, um, we, we have students going to many of the placement companies we, we, we place students with. So Microsoft, um, some, some of the cities and some of the banks in the city of London, um, a lot of the companies such as Samsung, um, a, lot, a lot of the um, mobile phone companies, and they're doing more and more cybersecurity stuff. Um, so those tend to be the, the main career paths, but there's lots of startups as well that we place, we, we, we have students go and work for as well. So there are common, uh, you know, Microsoft, that sort of um, um, city banking, um, but we do get a lot of small companies as well. Um, question four, I'm afraid I'll have to go say again, it's not, I'm not an MSc tutor, I'm a UG tutor, I'm an undergraduate tutor. So I'm afraid I'll have to pass on that, that question. Um, please contact me. There is an MSc contact you can contact for that information. So please do that. Um, question five, I mean, in which technology is mainly focused on? Uh, which technology is mainly? So we, we use, if, 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 I'm led, if I believe what the question is trying to get, we, we use Java programming languages in year one and Android Java in year two. But we have students who learn Python. We have students who also use Python. We have students who use C Sharp. And often it's because they've done a placement and they use those skills um, when they come back from placement. But um, some of my students go off and do things off their own, off their own bat, um, learn languages. The good thing about computer languages is that once you've learned one language, you can pretty much tailor your knowledge to any particular language. It's not difficult to pick up. Um, what is the average salary you can expect after completing CS graduation? Good question. OK, so... Um, I can only I can go on my own experience of what people have told me, and I would say it's about 30, 30 at least 30 plus, 30k plus for a startup starting salary. Um, the, the placement um salaries tend to be about average about 21, 20, 21, 2021. 20, but obviously, if you're given an offer for a job, then it's it's you, you know, it's it's up to you to negotiate. But 30k wouldn't be uncommon for a starting between. Yeah, high twenties, early thirties. But don't don't forget, once you've done a few years' experience, you tend to go up the ladder quite quickly. So thirty is a starting um, point. What is the fee structure of computer science and scholarship? Any scholarships? Um, the fee structure. Um, again, um, I'm not an expert on fees. I'm afraid I'm just on on. I'm a, we don't tend to get involved with the fees set up. Um, maybe they. Um, yeah, so, uh, for, and any scope of scholarship? There are scholarships. But again, this is going to sound a bit lame, but I don't tend to get involved in the follow scholarship, but we do offer scholarships, but it's very competitive and we only tend to offer very few, bear in mind the large number of applications we get. Um, again, I, question eight, what IEL, IELTS score is required for computer science course? Do you accept Duolingo score instead of IEL? I think you'd have to, you'd have to apply, okay, here's, here's, again, you'd have to apply to our departments for a place and then they would tell you what you are required to score um, in, in, in that particular um, test, I'm afraid. Um, question nine, does admission for master's require 16? I'm afraid I don't know about master's. Again, I'm sorry, this is undergraduate um, applications only. Um, can, um, 10, can you please tell me deadline for 22 in cake? Also, if there's any scholarship available. There are scholarships, yeah. Um, we, we accept applications at any time um, up until um, um, clearing, what we call clearing. So, but don't leave it too late because... Any time after about June, um, um, June, July time, July is pretty, we tend to start getting filled up with our with our cohort. Um, how is the UK? So, good question. Yeah, um, 
how is the UK dealing with the war and the COVID situation? Is it safe for international students? Please tell. Um, so at the moment, we are going back to full um, full class sizes, um, certainly in September. And we already lifted a lot of restrictions that we had in place a couple of months back. So um, we have, we, although a lot still done online, we're transitioning into a more of a hybrid. But certainly we'll have um, lecture theatres um, as they were before COVID um, this coming September, because there's no restrictions in the UK now. All restrictions were lifted a, a few weeks back. So, um, yeah. So it, it's safe. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly safe um, for international students. And I'd say the same about UK um, um, and home students as well. It's, it, you know, it's as safe as it, as, as, well, certainly the government thinks it's safe enough that they can lift all restrictions. So, uh, question 12 what is accommodation? What accommodation? For yeah. If you're a first year undergraduate student, we will guarantee you. Um, accommodation. I think that might apply to home, certainly. But if you're international, yes, you'd certainly be offered accommodation for the first year. The application process, I think you'd have to you, you apply online um, and you that will go through to registry, uh, admissions, um, and then you'll be get given an offer or not. And then it's up to you to fulfill that offer. And then we um we 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 give you a, a, a confirmation at um, a clearing, and then it's the place would be yours if you satisfied the criteria. Sorry, a lot of those questions were MSc related, and I can't, I could probably guess at the answer, but I would be, I would be purely guessing, and that's not fair to the guess. Best to contact the MSc people, um, the MSc um, staff who handle applications for MSc students. So, um, yeah, that's, I don't see any more questions. Um, I can go back on a few, maybe if I haven't, feel I haven't answered them particularly well. Um, I know the fee structure, number question seven, I know the fee structure for computer science home students. Um, I don't know the fee structure for international. It's, it's more, I know that, um, that goes probably goes without, without saying. Um, and then, yeah, we use robot, in question five, we use robots, we use drones. Um, if you want a piece of software for your particular project, you can apply to, to buy that software or hardware. Um, so we do have a pool of uh, money if you want to, to to buy a particular piece of equipment, obviously if, it, if it's a hundred, if it's if it's very expensive, we wouldn't wouldn't. But you know, reasonably priced, we would. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I can't see any other questions and um, coming through. Um, Pika, I don't know if anyone has any general questions they want to ask about any other if the courses and the modules. Um, a little bit more about placements. Um, so I did a placement. We would. We would provide you with a placement tutor and they would visit you twice, twice during your time visit there. You, the, as I said, at the end, you produce a document which which outlines what you've done on placement and, and things you've achieved. And that is marked by a tutor and that's, that, that will contribute towards your degree. Um, as I said, sometimes there is a fee for placement. It's a thousand pounds. I don't know how much is it in, in the local currency, but um, there is a fee for doing placement. But um, often a company will say to you, um, we'll waive that fee, we'll give you the money, um, we don't really want it back sort of thing. Um, one particular story I remember was a student who, and obviously IT students, IT graduates are in huge demand, so I know one student, he was, he was given up two job offers, okay, and one of the job offers was from the company he did his placement on, would offer him, let's say for argument's sake, 30k, and another company um, who he didn't do his placement on, obviously, were, were off, was offering him 35k starting salary. So he came to me and said, um, "And what do I do, Steve?" He was my he was my tutee. I, he said, "What do I do, Steve? I've been offered two 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 jobs. One is with my old placement company. One is with a new company. I don't know what to do. The difference is 5k." So I said, "Well, I don't know what to advise you because it's your 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 life. Uh, it's your choice. I can't really advise you what to do." Anyway. He came back to me a couple of weeks later and I said, well, what happened with the job situation? He said, oh, it's, that, that, that worked out quite well. I went back to the company that I worked on placement with, who had offered me 30, 30K, and, and I said that I'd been offered a 35K, and they immediately upped my, like their offer to 40K, so they immediately upped it by another 5K, and he said, well, that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm going back to my placement company. So, um, yeah, um, that's another story. Um, I get to visit lots of different companies, um, a lot of insurance companies um, in the city as well, AXA, Accenture um, is another as a consultancy, we place with consultancy companies as well. Um, we, I, we also place with manufacturers as well. So I used, I did a placement 
visit. And we had a student on a placement at Caterpillar. I don't know if you know Caterpillar is a they 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 build um, trucks and they build um, uh, protective equipment and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, um, we we've also placed with McDonald's as well. So McDonald's have a head office in London, and we have we had students there at one point as well. So the broad range of, co- of companies and topics. And um, yeah, oh, one question I get asked a lot is um, if you've got your own placement company, can you can you actually join them? So if you know a company, you, yes, you, and you want to join them in placement, yes, you can, but you have to go through some paperwork in order for that to apply. Um, we will help you do everything, get a placement. To get a placement, we will we will we will help you with your CV. We will help you with um, uh, interview style and, and give you practice sessions. So we'll do everything in order that we get you the position you want to get. Um, more and more games companies as well. That's becoming more and more popular. And also cybersecurity, as I mentioned. So lots of companies doing cyber stuff. And, um, and, and more so as well, a combination of cyber and AI, so or software engineering and AI. So, um, <coughs> so we tend to see students doing more combinations of topics as opposed to just single topics like cyber. Or, or AI, but um, yeah, that's but it's up to you. You don't it, you get the placement you want. To, you choose what kind of placement you want. We don't force you to do a specific placement. Um, I'm running dry of, of stories about placements, um, but I think that's that kind of um, gives you a little bit of detail about placements, which I think might be useful. We don't force people to do placement. It's your choice, your choice entirely. Um, the other thing you get asked a lot is supposing I enroll on a degree with placement or without placement, and then I want to change to the opposite. So if I want to change to a placement or from away from placement, can I do that? Yeah, you can. So if you do apply for a, a degree without placement and you decide, well, I do fancy doing a placement, then you can change your registration status and you get then get enrolled on a, on, on a degree with placement. Um, we will give you lots of information in your second year about what, what the process is. So we, we don't, we don't expect you to do all the legwork yourself. We will help you get, get that placement. Um, we do everything to make sure we, we, we help you along the way. Um, I think that's pretty much it, Pika. I don't know if any other questions coming in um, or any other questions generally. Please feel free to post on the, on the chat. Um, yeah. I'll have a quick review of the uh, one new message. Okay. International students only help to find jobs in the UK during the studies. Yeah. Well, you help us. Um, yeah. I mean, part time jobs are something my students do a lot. Yeah. So, good question. Uh, for international students, is there any help to find jobs in the UK during the studies? Will uni help us with the part time jobs? Yeah. Okay. Good question. So, we have a, a, a very, very good placement and careers office who not only have placement opportunities they have part-time jobs available um, and they will advertise those jobs and it, if international student yes you, you can apply for those jobs as well um, a lot of my students tend to do jobs um, around the local area but not in IT specifically they tend to do part-time jobs in um, in um, shops and stuff like that but um, but 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 you know, with a view to later you know, later on moving into IT but um, certainly, there are job opportunities and advertisements for jobs, um, mainly in the local area. But those are different to placements. But the university will certainly help you with uh, getting part part time jobs with the, through the advertisements. Um, I occasionally bump into some of my students in in shops and are uh, buy be buying something, um, and, and they'll say hello, Steve, and I say, how do they know my name? And I think, okay. Uh, and I'll say, how do you know my name? And oh, you're my student. Uh, you're my teacher. And sort of my lecturer. So that's always interesting. Um, I was offered a free uh, baguette, um, cheese baguette, one, um, one place. And the person over the counter handed me the baguette. I, I went to pay for the money for it. And he said, no, you can have that for free, Steve. I, I said, hey, firstly, how do we know my name? Because I haven't told him it. And um, why is it free? And I said, um, I'm, I'm one of your students. You can have that for free. Anyway. Um, I did pay for it. I, need, I did pay for it. I think it's only fair and right. So yeah, we yeah to cut long story short, yeah, we will help you get part time jobs, um, mainly jobs. So I, I ought to stress to support um, the income, 
to get you through um, the, the university process rather than IT jobs, because that's where the placements come in and, and after you've graduated. Yeah, so I hope that that, that answered your question. Um, is that any help to find jobs? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll help. Yeah, we have a, we have one of the best placement and careers offices in in the UK, I believe. Um, and they're very, very helpful and very, very um, um, friendly as well, which is important. So they help you however they can. One thing I get asked a lot is how many how many interviews do I have or how difficult is it to get a placement? Well, it, it, if you apply yourself, it's like anything in life. If you apply yourself, put as much effort as you can into it, it normally pays off. You know, if you don't put any effort into anything, you're not going to get the reward. So, yeah, but um, I had three or four interviews before I got my placement. So, um, but then I was never very good at interviews, particularly. Some people are good at interviews, some are not. So that's, that's, that, that's, everyone's different and everyone's, um, as their strengths and weaknesses, but um, there you go. I was actually a developer before I moved into university. So I, I um, when I finished, when I graduated, I became a developer, a coder, and then um, and went to a PhD and um, and the rest is history sort of thing. So, yeah. so I have an industrial background, which I, I think helps um, me understand students who want to apply for jobs in, in industry and, and elsewhere. So, yeah, okay. I. Hope that answers the question. Um, any more questions? Please feel free to put in the chat. Um, I'll just review the questions I've been asked. Just if anything I can add. Um, that some of the yeah, some of the requirements for um, applications are listed on the on the Brunel website. So the question about the IELTS stuff, I think the requirement might be stated on the on the department pages or on the university pages for, for the for the application process. So have a look there um, if, 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 you, if you're unsure. Um, yeah. yeah, I think we have covered all the questions from the chat box. Many thanks for answering all the questions. Answering no the question, yeah, uh, and sharing your knowledge with us, Steve. So no yeah, so do you have anything else you want to put forward for the uh, audience right now? No, no, I just wanted to, I mean, I, I could have spent a lot more on the slides, but but people will get bored quite quickly, Dabika, and I think yeah, yeah. Just a flavour of those slides and, and what we do and who we are, and yeah. then um, and then and it, uh, you know, rather than a detailed analysis of the, the modules um, and the course. Um, one, one other thing, a couple of other things worth mentioning is cybersecurity the module is very popular. Um, I'm, I'm sure you can understand cyber security is cyber security is or cyber is very popular at the moment, and so too AI. So, in both those modules, you'll learn techniques and practices which will help you apply if you want to for jobs in that area. Um, but obviously, having a degree which gives you a firm grounding in the topic as a whole um, is, 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 is fundamental to what we what we do. We like to think we we produce rounded, rounded students with skills that are widely relevant to the IT, in, IT world. One thing, yeah, things keep um, popping up in my mind. Um, we have large numbers of societies as well um, in the university. So we have um, lots of sporting activities, lots of other clubs which you can join, um, lots of other things you can get involved with aside from your studies because we think that you know, it's important to be rounded so we don't have lectures on Wednesday afternoons because that's sporting afternoon. Okay, and We try to limit the number of nine o'clock lectures we have because no one likes nine o'clock lectures. Um, so we try to make sure you have um, a, a spread of times when lectures start. And um, the other question I get asked a lot is um, how many contact hours per week? So broadly speaking, so how many hours do you actually spend with tutors, lectures? Um, we have, we, we'd say about 16 hours contact time a week that's lectures that's labs we have labs of course um, we have you'll have seminars you'll have one-to-one -one meetings with your tutor and on top of that of course you have your coursework to do so every module that i mentioned in the, the, the talk every module so for example cybersecurity will have a piece of coursework and an exam um, so that's normally what what happens with with modules um, yeah so yeah um, trying to think of some more 
frequently asked questions, um, but I'm I'm running dry. So yeah, no, nothing else really to peek at unless it occurs to me. But um, but um, yeah, good questions. Thanks for thanks for all the questions. Thank you, Steve. Uh, I think we're moving moving towards the end of this seminar. Thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, to well, all, yeah, to all the audience, if you have any further question, please feel free to SIUK in their offices. We'll be more than happy to help you. So in the end, I would like to say thank you so much for your valuable time today to all the students and Steve for joining. Yeah, and thank, thanks for joining. And, and um, we'd love to see you at Brunel, obviously. Um, but, you know, so, yeah, so please, please feel free to apply. And um, yeah, um, good luck with, with, with whatever you do. And um, it's been a pleasure. And thanks, thanks for sparing the time. So th thank you. And thank you to Pika and everyone for organising this seminar. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. And you, Pika. All the best.